Hi everyone, my name's Anne Marie. Welcome to this gorgeous card making project. We're going to use the mini fan dies from Anna Griffin and we're also going to use the gorgeous raspberry stroke cerise satin cardstock to make a really spectacular card, but a very easy one. So I think it's all in the layers for this one. Everything I do use, I shall put in a detailed list on my blog, so please be sure to check it out. If you've ever got any questions or comments, feel free to contact me on Facebook or through my blog. If you do it on YouTube, I can't always reply to you. It's not been me being rude, it's just as a glitch on my account and my replies disappear. So I would spend hours writing and replying to everybody, only to find that they've disappeared. So now I try and reply but they're a bit hit and miss. So Facebook or direct contact, that's the way to go. Feel free to share any of the projects, whether it be from the blog or from YouTube. That's always great. And I'm happy for you to share it with your crafty friends or in your forums, etc. But if you're going to add it to a website, just be sure to contact me first, just to um, let me know. Okay, so let's craft. Now the first thing that we're going to need for this particular card is our base card. Now I'm using a standard 7x5 inch card, my favourite size. And believe me, I do try to make cards in other sizes. We've just had one of 6x6 last Friday. And then all the shaped cards as well with the easel kit in the mini series that we've just had. But I always go back to the 7x5s. And I want to apologise, but I don't really because no apology is needed. This is the perfect size for new crafters, advanced crafters, any crafter. Whatever you do, whatever stage you're at, it's just the most perfect size. And the cardometer, I've whipped it away a bit quick there. Our cardometer shows exactly the size so A4 is the largest size, A5 is A4 folded in half. Now if you one of my US friends, I know you call that something different, but it's still A4 folded in half. And then 7x5 is next, and then A6. Again, my US friends, I know you call that something slightly different. But it's A4 folded in half to A5, A5 folded in half is A6. And where in that middle, where that blue one there. So that gives you perspective at home of what size card that we're actually going to use. Now I'm going to take my bone folder and for any new viewers, this is in the Anna Griffin Tool Collection. And I'm simply going to run it along the edge of the card to make sure that we've got a nice sharp crease. Because even though these are factory scored and folded, they're not the best crease in the world. So it's always nice to be able to use your bone folder to make sure that's nice and sharp for when it stands up it looks nice and professional. Always add your name on the back whether you've got a handmade stamp or not because all you have to do is made by and then put your name. I always add my name um, with my handmade stamp because this year I'm keeping track and I add the dates and everything for my projects. You don't have to add the dates. But it is nice for the recipient to know who's made the card for them. Now this card is going to be a really, really pretty card. And I've got to say that when we create the inside, we're just going to move the card out of the way for a minute. I've cut a rectangle to fit the inside of the card. I've also die cut one of the mini fans out of the top of the rectangle. Now I've cut it straight in the middle so it's kind of positioned. I've tapped a raspberry coloured ink pad along the side of the actual rectangle. The panel rectangle will fit perfectly to the inside of the card. Now you can see it's a slightly different coloured ivory and I'm happy about that because I'm using a mix of different ivories. This is more of a cream rather than an ivory. But the first thing I want to do is add a panel to the back of where I've cut the fan aperture. So all I'm doing is I want to peel the tape away that I've got on the back so that I can add 
this panel of metallic cardstock and just get it in the right position. So we're going to start off doing that and I'm simply going to add that there like so and then I can take the rest of the tape off the panel and add it to the inside of our card. So peel it away, there's quite a lot of tape on here but it's only it's only because um, I cut my tape, it was quite wide tape as you can see and I cut it down so I thought I'd better use all the pieces rather than waste them. So now we've taken all the tape away we can add this section to the inside of our card. So I can centre it up. You can see where I've tapped it round the edge with the ink pad. And so now that looks like a really nice just aperture with coloured cardstock underneath. So what I've done is I've die cut in the raspberry satin cardstock, the fan die. I've also die cut an oval. Now the oval is taken from the fa uh, French frame dies. We're going to use one of them on the front, but the oval is from there. And that was the second, it was the middle size oval. I was going to say second largest, but it was the middle size. There's three ovals in that set and I've used the middle one. I've tapped an ink pad around the edge and then I have used um, clear embossing powder just to give it a shine, you can just see that. I've stamped a small circle, now this is from the Anna Griffin Sentiment die set and stamps and the dies from there as well, it's a small circle and I've used one of the stamps as well. So I've taken everything through the Zyron machine just to show that whether it's really ornate or just a standard oval it will go through. After taking it through it hasn't changed the embossing on the actual fan. It's not touched the heat embossing. It won't damage anything. You can take photos through. You can take embossed pieces through. It will just put adhesive on the back. You break the seal of the carrier sheet by just running a bone folder or something smooth around the edge so that you can peel off your item and the adhesive will stay on the back. So this is the actual die for the fan and now I'm going to pop it into the aperture that we've cut like so and then I'm going to press it down so that we can see behind it the pink metallic card like so but on the top it's that gorgeous cerise satin. Now I'm going to take the oval because we just want a centre panel to be able to write our to and from etc. So I'm going to add that over the base of the fan like that and then the little stamp circle I'm just going to add just at the base of the fan on the tip of the oval. So now we've got a complete section to write our to and from and our message and it's going to match perfectly to the front. What a pretty idea. Now we can turn our attention to the front of our card. So I'm using my bone folder again just to make sure I've got that nice sharp score along the edge. Now my base layer is a cerise layer of the metallic cardstock from the Anna Griffin 7x5 metallic layers and I've embossed the edges. Now you can see that I've not embossed it really well however it doesn't matter because you won't see these bits but the thing is where you can see the embossing around the edge that's what I wanted. I've used the terrific titles embossing folder and that was embossing folder number one and it's just circles. Now the embossing folder itself is a smaller embossing folder so you do it in four sections. So I emboss this top section, turn the cardstock round, this bit, 
this bit and then this bit because I'm only wanting the edge anyway so it was just to give the actual cardstock a little bit of texture it could be any embossing folder uh, it could be any whether it's a large one or a small one that's what I'm trying to say so I'm going to add my layer to the front of my card now the layer covers the entire card front because it's seven by five in size and so is our card so that's our first layer my second layer is i've used the rose designer collection from anna and i just want to decide which way up to use that we'll go that way i've cut out a shadow effect from the fr french frame dies now to get this i've drawn around the die because I wanted a shadow layer I've put it on 3D foam and I'm just pressing it down on the front of the card my next layer is the die cut of the actual frame and I've used the raspberry satin cardstock from Anna this is on flat tape and I'm simply laying it over the previous layer which was our shadow layer like so so, so far, I mean, that looks pretty already. So you can see the embossing along the edge and it just gives it just something a little bit different. So now we can turn our attention to our fans. So I've die cut two of the shadow layers using the rose collection and I've also die cut two of the actual fan layers using the raspberry satin cardstock. The base layer has got 3D foam along the edge and tape in towards the middle because I want it to sit raised at one side and then flat to the middle. The second fan and its shadow die cut is exactly the same so the actual fan die cut was on flat tape and then the base the shadow 3d foam along the edge and flat tape towards the middle and we're just going to add one on top of the other so you can see that we've got that stepped effect there we go Next, I'm taking two flowers from the mini flower and sentiment selection from Anna. So I've got two roses and I'm just going to add one rose to the other, like, kind of like that, making a little bit of an arc. And I'm going to add those to the base of the fan, like so, and press them down. Next, I've got the frog, or the tassel, from there, because I think a frog is actually a fastener, and this is just the tassel. You might be able to correct me there. But anyway, I've got the tassel, and I've die cut it in the raspberry satin cardstock and then I've made the shadow layer in the rose designer collection I've got 3d foam at the bottom and flat tape at the top and I'm simply going to add that to the towards the bottom of our card like so now for the sentiment this is from the mini flower and sentiment stickers where we got the little flowers from and it just says birthday wishes now instead of using it as a sticker, I've got it on 3D foam and I'm simply going to add that between our flowers. There we go. Like so. So it's between the flowers, but it's above the tassel. There, press it down. And then I'm going to finish it off with a tiny pink bow at the bottom of the sentiment just above the tassel and that 
is our card finished. Pretty, pretty, pretty card. That's our inside. Looks like an egg with a plume. Obviously it isn't. But I thought I'll mention that before anybody else does. Great for an Easter card, wasn't it? So that's our inside. This is not an egg. It's for our to and from and our message. And our fans on the front. Stands up perfectly. That will definitely go on a mantelpiece. Look at the colours. Whoa. Just love that foil cardstock. I'm saying foil. It's satin. I love the satin. Especially on camera because you can see it. It's not giving a glare. And how it teams up with the Rose Designer Collection. And oh. Just so pretty. All that pink. Few layers, but not too high because the layers are overlapping. So, mm, probably a normal envelope. Obviously, you have everything weighed before you post it, so you'll know yourself. But what a pretty card. Please check my blog because I'll take the extra photos, definitely, of this one. Well, as I do of all of them. But you'll be able to see the inside and you see the close-up of things. And... Um, I just hope you've enjoyed it. So I'd just like to say thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.